you all for coming to tonight's lecture on the Old Plank Road. This is Dr. Mark Stouter. He's going to be presenting this evening. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Okay. <laughs> well, I say this is going to be a little slideshow about the Plank Road. Now, some of the some of you older people in the audience might remember me. Uh, I used to run the historical manuscript office for the university and the state historical society on the Rolla campus of the university. And I would come to this area. We got a lot of good manuscripts, uh, old letters and diaries and business records, stuff like that. And my first visit was in April 1980. So it's been a that wow, then I came back fairly regularly after that, but I've been retired for a few years now. So this is sort of from a previous incarnation, previous life. Uh, one of the first collections we acquired from St. Genevieve was just a list of items with numbers, and at the top it said uh, something like, in account with American Iron Mountain Company. And, well, that's nice. And you know, as I came back here, I heard people talk about the Plank Road and stuff, and gradually was able to put things together about the Plank Road and the iron ore trade. And I got to wondering about it. Well, everybody knew about the Plank Road, but nobody seemed to know much about the Plank Road. So I did some research and uh, then put together this little slideshow. So we'll go to the next one. A Living Stream of Prosperity. I'm the, uh, <laughs> I got the title, I think, uh, I think Furman Rozier used that in a talk he gave promoting or, or talking about the Plank Road. And he called it a Living Stream of Prosperity. And now this woodcut is not actually from our plank road, but it shows what a plank road would have been like. It was called the St. Genevieve Iron Mountain and Plank, Pilot Knob Plank Road Company. It was a private company. So I'll go to the next one. Oh, that's, that's me. <laughs> okay. Why a plank road? Well, you can see here that in the two decades prior to the Civil War, North America experienced a plank road boom in which thousands of miles of plank road were constructed. And they promised economical construction, it was made out of wood, and maintenance using local materials and labor, but like a railroad where you needed special <coughs> equipment and everything, smooth all-weather surface, and you could do it as a toll road and charge user fees and that way the taxpayers wouldn't be burdened with having to build it. And they were built all over the country starting in the east working its way west. In Missouri well, there were 10 or 15 that were built. The St. Louis area had three or four. So in fact I grew up I grew up in uh, southeastern Michigan, and the little town I grew up in, if you went down, down my street to Main Street and went out of town on Main Street, Main Street became the Plank Road. So they, they were around. Uh, okay, we'll go to the next one. And the reason this was a good place for one, during the 1840s, the iron mines and furnaces at Iron Mountain and Pilot Knob were producing tons of metal, for which there was a ready market in St. Louis in the eastern United States. But the poor condition of the roads made it hard to get there. And even during good weather, it would take a week to haul from Saint Gen to St. Genevieve from Iron Mountain. It was about 40 miles. It was, it was not easy, and of course in bad weather you could forget about it. And then a railroad would be expensive and take a long time to build, but a plank road seemed to be just right. Okay, that's Pilot Knob down there. So, in 1851, 
the state legislature chartered the St. Genevieve Iron Mountain and Pilot Knob Plank Road Company to design, build, own, and operate a wooden turnpike in St. Genevieve, St. Francis, and Madison counties. I have to point out here that Iron County wasn't established until 1857. So in the development phase, it was not, you won't see that. Then the company sold shares of stock to raise the necessary capital to acquire the right of way and construct the road. And shareholders were promised a prompt and generous return on their, of course, nobody would buy it otherwise. But let's go back to that one. Yeah. This, is, this is an actual certificate of stock in the Plank Road. I, uh, I found it on eBay and put in an extremely generous bid for it. And of course, in the last minute, I almost got out bid. <laughs> but I got it. And you can see it, uh, this one, this, this certificate, number 36, where they actually sold the shares to St. Francis County. The county of St. Francis, not an individual, but the county of St. Francis. And that was 1853. Uh, the Rosiers, this is Francis Rosier, the Rosiers were very prominent in building the road and promoting it. Uh, they put a lot of pressure on the local governments and, and people to buy shares. They weren't going to get any help from St. Louis. St. Louis was trying to build a railroad down from St. Louis, what eventually became the Iron Mountain Railroad. So. The, they weren't going to fund the Plank Road to St. Genevieve. St. Genevieve at the time actually kind of saw itself as a possible rival to St. Louis as a Mississippi River port. And with the iron and industry that that would support, it would be one of the great cities of the world like St. Louis. So, Plank Road Company had power of eminent domain to acquire its right of way, but when it could not reach a satisfactory price or the property was held by a widow and dower or a minor child, the circuit court appointed a three-man panel of disinterested citizens to determine a fair settlement. Since the records of the Plank Road Company itself have been lost, unless you, anybody out here knows where they are, <laughs> my guess is that when the Plank Road went bust, the, the records went bust with the road, but I have not found any. So we have to work from kind of like uh, sideways on secondary documents. So this is in uh, St. Fra Francis County, I believe, and where they're appointing a three-man uh, panel. Who would, it, it, it worked just like a railroad or anything else where you're taking eminent domain and they would determine a fair price for the property. And that's kind of what we have to, as far as documenting the railroad, uh, the, the plank road. Are these documents that when they had to go into court for some reason or other. Okay. So here's one of the surveys, and so they had to have a survey to get the exact location of the property. So that's great when, when we get that, otherwise we don't know exactly where the road went. But with the survey we do. And here's where it uh, crossed the St. Francis River. I think you can make out there, that's the right of way here, and it crosses the river right up there. And that was the only that was the only major river crossing that it had. And they set up a, a toll booth there, of course, because that's the only place you could cross. So, uh, I say the toll booth at this site was a major irritant to local travelers. The, uh, well, the iron companies, they knew that this was, this was the only way they were going to get there. And you can't hide a big wagon full of iron ore. But the local people were really upset that they were going to be charged a toll. And uh, 
they evaded it as much as they could. You, you also, you could, you could evade the toll. Uh, I think uh, children going to school didn't have to pay. And if you're like going to church on Sunday morning, you didn't have to pay. <coughs> probably they didn't man the toll booth at that time. Probably why they didn't pay. But, but that's they have the, these surveys, and you have to go to the uh, this is from the St. Francis County Archives. You go over to the courthouse. At least when I was doing the research, you go over to the courthouse, go up in a in a room, sort of there, and they'd say, "Oh, well, they're in there." <laughs> and you'd you'd get the stuff out and look at it from the right from the di right date. Okay. So here's an example: May 7, 1852, an arbitration panel in St. Francis County awarded Nicholas Fleming the sum of thirty-five dollars for the use of 2.17 acres of his land. In at least one case, the panel decided that the property would be improved by the plank road and awarded no damages. In other instances, property owners who welcomed the road accepted a nominal payment in return for granting it right away. So that's, that's kind of the, the documentation that we have for the construction of the, of the plank road. Uh, it sure would be nice to have the records, but we don't. <laughs> we probably never will. Okay. Then uh, local residents complained that the Plank Road Company, in order to increase toll revenues, had blocked parallel public roads. That they would fell trees across the public roads, <laughs> forcing you to use the toll road. In this document, they petitioned the court for relief. Plank Road officials, on the other hand, complained of wide-scale evasion of tolls. In any case, the metal haulers were the company's major source of income to the extent that the Pilot Knob Iron Company made advance payments in order to keep the road open. Uh, I found no indication that the Plank Road was ever financially successful, even at the beginning. The main problem, I think I'll get to this later, but the main problem is that the planks wore out much faster than they could be replaced. Uh, these wagons, which would haul, I suppose, two or three tons of iron ore, they had these big wagon wheels that had iron rims on them. And it was the same, but it was the same all over the country. If they'd, if they'd had better communication in those days, they never would have built a plank road at, in the late date of 1853. But uh, you learn. Okay, I'll keep going. Now here's the tolls, and a little hard to read, but this is 1856, James McDaniel. Uh, and let's see, I think he was hauling, he was probably hauling metal. And these numbers, he's got the date, the mile, how many miles he traveled, and then how many horses were in the team, and then the toll, and the total toll. So that's so he paid six dollars and forty two cents in tolls in roughly a month's time. That's in those days was money. Yeah, it was money. Yeah. I say they could now if I was talking about a week with the plank road, they could haul uh, from Iron Mountain to St. Genevieve in about two days. They could do about twenty miles in a day. So it was a it, it was a big improvement. It really worked. It just wasn't economical. <coughs> okay, a sad ending. High maintenance costs for the replacement of worn out planks kept the plank road from being profitable. The completion of the railroad from St. Louis to Iron Mountain and then Pilot Knob sealed the company's fate and forced it into insolvency. In 1860, the firm's assets were sold on the courthouse steps. So if you want to buy a road, <laughs> you can do it. In fact, I just got a thing on, on the internet today from uh, MoDOT. If you want to buy the bridge at Chester, it's, 
it could it might be available. <laughs> I guess that's cash and carry on something like that. But, but uh, the St. Genevieve County portion soon reverted to county ownership. But in St. Francis County, a new company operated successfully as a gravel road. And that operated into the 20th century. And I, th and I think that that's what the people there tended to remember, because the, the whole, the toll houses that were still there, up into the, gosh, well into the 1950s or 60s, there was still a toll house at uh, that east side of Farmington. And I think that's more what they remember is the gravel road company. But it was follow the route. And this, this shows it being, being sold on the courthouse steps. Uh, obviously, the, it wasn't worth anything. <laughs> Let's face it. But it was, it was if you gravel. It wasn't that worth anything. As a, okay, go to the next one here. I might have a picture. Yeah, new beginning. So the St. Francis and Iron Mountain Road Company used old plank road stock certificates and simply crossed out the old name. See, here's a certificate of stock. I think this is from the county. Uh, but uh, see, they crossed out the name and simply replaced it. And I think, uh, yeah, Furman Rozier was the head of the new company. And it lasted in, uh, until Missouri instituted the statewide public roads program in the 20th century. Uh, today, the route of the historic Plank Road is traversed by a combination of state primary and secondary routes, county roads, and city streets. So it only lasted, it was completed in, in sections, but let's say roughly 1854 through 1859. We're talking about five years. <laughs> And, when, and people still talk about the Plank Road. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting that it made, the, uh, made such a lasting impression on people. Uh, I'm trying to think somewhere. I've got the, uh, I won't find it anywhere quickly, but uh, what it was sold for. The, I'll get into it a little bit afterwards. I have a little time. So let's go to the next one here. Yeah, let's take a, take a trip along the Plank Road. I took most of these pictures, I'd say, around mid-1990s or so. So uh, the MoDOT, in its wisdom, has changed some of the route numbers. But it's still the same road. So don't pay much attention to uh, Highway W here. That's now... 221, I think. It's, yeah. Uh, but you can see here's Iron Mountain. Of course, Iron Mountain, you know, is the, the fabled mountain of pure iron ore. So pure that you could just chop off a hunk and beat it into a plowshare right there on the mountain. Well, not quite. <laughs> Pilot Knob turned, uh, turned out to be a much much more productive route. The original road, uh, see, here's, here's Ironton, which actually was, here's Pilot Knob. It was the St. Genevieve Iron Mountain and Pilot Knob Road Company. And the original road was going to go down to Pilot Knob. They had a spur down to Pilot Knob. That was never built. They ran out of money. Also, that was in Madison County at the time. And the Madison County Court declined to buy any of the stock. So eh, it never got built. That, that didn't help. Uh, now St. Genevieve and St. Francis County and St. Genevieve, St. Genevieve City, St. Genevieve County, and St. Francis County did buy stock. And I'll, get to, I'll do the story of the uh, St. Genevieve City investment a little later. So let's take a trip. Next one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, the classic route, of course, was west to east because the, the road was designed to haul the 
iron ore and uh, what they called pigs, they had furnaces on site there, what they called pigs of iron to the uh, to St. Genevieve to be shipped on the river. So start at uh, Iron Mountain and uh, still things left from when it was a actually a producing uh, mining area and it's the this Iron Mountain Trap Rock Company was on the site of the American Iron Mountain Company's works. And we're looking east here from the start. Okay. Now, so see, I planned spur of the plank road, the pilot knob. Now Missouri Secondary Route V, and I must say, I think they've changed the numbers on these. It was never built. Madison County Court refused to issue bonds to purchase stock in the Plank Road Company. In 1857, Pilot Knob became part of the new Iron County, but by then the Plank Road was failing and they weren't going to build the extension. And, and also, in 18, early in 1858, the railroad did get to uh, Iron Mountain and Pilot Knob. And once the railroad got there from St. Louis, then any road to St. Genevieve was doomed. <laughs> so, so you continue on eastbound here. I'll go to the next one. A little hard to read this, but uh, here's the here's the St. Francis River. Here's Farmington up here. Uh, this is interesting. This the electric railroad. Here they, you know, they had a, it was like an electric interurban that carried the miners through a fairly wide area around here. So that's on that map. But here is where the Plank Road crossed the St. Francis River. And I'm pretty sure that this, this swale right through here was the original route of the Plank Road. And really nothing, nothing there now. But uh, of course, it's been a long time. It was just wood, so the wood disappeared. But that's where Highway, what was Highway W, crossed crossed the St. Francis River. You can see the uh, the water tower for Farmington back here. You're looking east again, okay? And it entered Farmington from the west on Columbia Street. There was a Apparently there was a toll booth on either side of Farmington. Inside Farmington they used the city streets. So that wasn't part of the road. And then uh, for many years the St. Francis and Iron Mountain Gravel Road Company maintained a toll house at the present day intersection of Highway 32 and State Secondary Road 00 up here. And too bad it was never, I'm not sure when it was lost, but probably in some road widening effort. So it went right through Farmington. Okay. Oh, let's go back to Wolf Creek. Okay, it comes out of Farmington. And then uh, at Wolf Creek, east of Farmington, there's a bloomery known as Valley Forge. Now that's a, I'm pretty sure that's a corruption that valley is a corruption of your valley, V-A-L-L-E. And uh, where cast iron pigs were worked into blooms, it, there was a form that had these huge hammers that somehow beat on the pigs and turned them into blooms, which were a higher value item. And I could find no, no record of it. It would have been a substantial operation. But I don't know where to look. If I had a good industrial archaeologist, they might be able to say, here's where it was. But I think that this, this is the, the roadbed here. And Wolf Creek is just, uh, I think, just up here. And if you go, to, if you take 32 from Farmington toward St. Genevieve, there's a little turnoff. There, and it's really a farm lane now. There's a house there, not too far east of, not too far uh, east of Farmington.
And they have a rock that did, at least did have a rock there. I didn't check it today. It's not there anymore. They used to have a, a, a sign of, like a rock sign, root of the plank road. But I, didn't, I didn't go that way today, so I don't, might not be there anymore. But that farm lane was the plank road. Okay, go to the next one. And we have the, the pre present day hamlets of Weingarten and New Offenburg. And mm, I'll have to check with somebody who knows St. Genevieve County history a lot better than I do, but I don't think they were there in the 1850s. I think those are, I think those are post-war. But the plank road is there. Were they, do you think there were settlements there? I would think there were. Were they? I don't know. But uh, again, this is the plank road. This is one place, well, a lot of places, Highway 32 simply overlaid where it was. So, But this is one place where now Highway 32 kind of bypasses. And, uh, so we have the, you can see where the plank road was at, at uh, Weingarten and New Offenburg. Okay. Uh, then here's where it gets a little interesting again. Uh, you come up to uh, where 32 crosses I-55. Of course, that's all been changed by highway construction. But if you take this little jog here and go up here to the Lime Kiln Road, that was that was the plank road. And see now it kind of follows the, the Mike and Ike Railroad for a lot, a lot of its distance. But uh, it, uh, we'll go to the next slide. And especially like here along the creek, uh, it's been blacktopped of course. But that's probably a pretty good approximation of what the plank road looked like in its heyday. And you can see even even today it's not a not a big road. It's been blacktopped. And this house is that the sex hour house? Yeah. yeah. And it would actually have gone straighter there. I'll have to explain that. But but that house, I don't not sure that house either. That Probably is after the Civil War, but uh, no, it was built pre -Civil War. you think so? I know so. Oh, oh. <laughs> ask, ask the man who owns one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And then see it here in the background. You can just see the top of one of the giant uh, mounds of lime. I guess here's the road goes that way, but that's all owned by the Lime Company now, so uh, the current road has to wind its way around that up to Highway 61. Okay, we'll go to the next one. Maybe. There we go. Well, then we finally get to St. Genevieve. It came in on Market Street, which makes sense. And see so here, here we are coming in on Market Street, down past the brick, down toward the river, which led to a landing on the navigable, what they call a navigable slough on the Mississippi River, about where the railroad is now. Uh, this was always, the, the navigable slough was always a, a problem for St. Genevieve. Unlike St. Louis, they did not have a, a real nice landing right on the main channel of the river. And the navigable slough in normal, normal levels, it was usable. But low water or high water, it was not. So, and they tried to get, they tried to get the, the federal government to help them out to improve the port facilities and stuff. 
but it was not forthcoming. So, and now, then in later years, when after the steamboat trade ended, it get filled in. That's where the railroad is now, and you actually have to, on normal water, you have to go a fair distance now to get to the river from downtown St. Genevieve. Well, the river changed course around 1882. It yeah. was a lot closer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all changed. Uh, maybe if they'd been able to get the uh, proper channels dug and stuff like that, but they weren't. So, we'll go to the next one. So what they did, they built another toll road. This one from St. Genevieve up to Little Rock, which is on the main channel, as you can see, is on the main channel of the, of the river, was then, is now. And so that, they, they, they did a lot of the shipping from Little Rock. And we do have records of the of the steamboats. They they would tend they would put the ore on uh, barges, then they'd be either pushed up to St. Louis, or some of it actually went downriver, then up the Ohio to Louisville and Cincinnati and Pittsburgh. So it was while it lasted, it was it was a good trade. But of course now we've got the the ferry is at that site now. So. And the lime port. Whoops. Okay, there. That says, although it was never fully completed, it was in operation less than 10 years. It left a lasting impression. And uh, we even found in the records of the State Historical Society the St. Genevieve and Iron Mountain Plank Road Quick Step. <laughs> And it's, and it's by, it was dedicated to Miss Emily G. Berryman. Obviously, she was one of the, the very influential Berryman clan. But ACF, I haven't been able to identify. Is anybody having any ideas? Uh, an accomplished composer. But, uh, yeah. Al played it one time and he said it was a tough song to play. <laughs> yeah. So, but again, it, 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 for the short time that it existed, it firmly implanted itself in the, uh, in, in the history and the memory around here. Okay, do we have another one? That might be the end. Okay. And you can see there's the sources that I use for the most part. But there's sort of a postscript to this whole story that I've mentioned to sell shares of stock, they went to the local governments to buy. And for, they did. Now St. Genevieve, the city of St. Genevieve, in order to buy the stock, sold bonds. Okay, so they get the money from the bonds and buy the stock, and then they would pay off the interest and redeem the bonds with the fantastic profits they were going to make <laughs> from that. Well, that didn't work out. Uh, the bonds were initially sold to uh, one of the Rosers, I think it was Francis, but he sold his bonds to a couple of investors in the East. <laughs> and, of course, St. Genevieve defaulted on the bonds and promptly got sued in federal court for the interest and the, and the principal on the bonds. Well, this is like 1860. Well, something happened after that called the Civil War. And so nothing much happened then, but then after the war, the the bondholders are back, and the city of St. Genevieve does not have a government. Under the Constitution adopted by Missouri right after the Civil War, they had what they call the Ironclad Oath, and in order to hold any sort of office, you had to 
swear that you had maintained your allegiance to the United States throughout this, what they call it, the War of the Rebellion. Well, the, the leadership in St. Genevieve, well, they were slave owners for the most part, the Rosiers and the Valleys, and uh, they saw themselves as sort of the southern aristocracy planter class. And they were notorious Confederate sympathizers. And after the war, they were not able to take this oath. So St. Genevieve had no government. All the elected officials couldn't take, couldn't take the oath. <laughs> so, now never let it be said that uh, the uh, municipal officers of St. Genevieve are dumb. They certainly not. <laughs> They declared that uh, because of this, the city of St. Genevieve was now dead, defunct, gone, no more. And they had the county court reincorporate the city under the title of the inhabitants of the city of St. Genevieve. And of course, they went to the, they told the bondholders, you're out of luck. That was the old St. Genevieve <laughs> that issued those bonds. We're the new St. Genevieve and we don't, we don't owe on those bonds. Well, that, didn't, that did not deter the bondholders. Now actually, it went all the way to uh, Federal Circuit Court. And the, <laughs> the, the bondholders won at every, every stage. And finally, it got to where the federal judge said, okay, here's, listen to me. The city of St. Genevieve, the original city of St. Genevieve, was chartered by the state legislature of Missouri, by legislation. That legislation was never repealed. The city of St. Genevieve still exists, whether it has officers or not. So he said, one thing you got to do, find people who can take the oath and get your government going again and impose a tax on the, on the people of St. Genevieve to pay off these bonds. Well, of course, the city dragged its feet on that. And eventually, they had to send a federal marshal down here to impose the tax. And it wasn't until 1874, these bonds were issued I think in 1851 or two, it wasn't until 1874 that finally the Plank Road saga came to an end. And St. Genevieve got out of debt and paid off, they uh, paid off the bond, whatever the agreement was, they paid it off. So it's sort of an interesting story that it continued on that long, and especially since they, they knew they had worthless, worth, worthless stock, and how, how are we going to get out of paying for the bonds that we issued to buy this? worthless stock. <laughs> so it, it continued on. It was an interesting thing and the, the uh, federal judge actually called it, uh, uh, what was the thing he used on his decision? It was a novel and interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> the, the judge ex explained that St. Genevieve was not alone. Most of our state Missouri was Confederate sympathizers. So St. Genevieve was not alone in losing its municipal officers and they had ways to deal with that. St. Genevieve just did it a little too clever by half, I guess <laughs> that's the way to put it. So that's the story of the, of the uh, Plank Road. I, I want to add one more thing, not related to the Plank Road, but uh, one of my retirement One of my retirement projects, I run the Phelps County Historical Society in Rolla, and somebody gave us some newspapers from 1949. And of course, Rolla's the home of the, the School of Mines, now known as, help me out here, Baron. MSCC. 
MS and T, Missouri School of Science, Missouri University of Science and Technology, something like that. <laughs> It'll be something different next year. But. So anyway, and they also have the State Geological Sur Survey is there. So here in second coming headlines in the Rolla Daily News, I can find it here. This is geologists. Geologists find uranium ore! Exclamation point. St. Genevieve is site of discovery by Dr. Muhlenberg. Yes, and they talk... Uh, how did they describe it? They said it was uh, like huge. Of course, in 1949, we were looking for uranium for a couple of reasons. One, to build up our nuclear stockpile of weapons. And another was that uh, nuclear power was figured to be the next great thing. So you needed, I remember when I was a kid in the 50s that there were people with Geiger counters all, all over the country trying to find uranium. So that, was, that was the new gold, you know. Uh, local geologists excited over finding uranium ore near St. Genevieve could be of vast importance to the United States. So, tomorrow, maybe somebody could take me out to the uranium mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd, like, I'd like to see this. You have power off. Probably actually sits on that. And I don't know if you have any... Obviously, I run Tower Rock. Okay. Yeah. Obviously, it never, it never developed into a huge. Yeah. Oh, that's too bad because you could have been, you could have been the uranium capital of, of, of America. Yeah. But I thought that was great when I first saw the headline in the Rolla paper about the huge. And I'd been coming here for 35 years. Nobody ever talked about the, the huge uranium mine. Just, just us. <laughs> also, in the paper was some, the uh, this a little bit later. The uh, there was a plan to build an atomic bomb factory in the Ozarks, down around uh, Van Buren, Carter County. That'd be a perfect location because nobody lived down there, of course. So let's let's build build an atomic bomb factory. Fortunately, that never, never, never happened. happened. But I thought that was interesting that uh, St. Genevieve was briefly headline news. <laughs> <laughs> and I did bring a, a map, which you can come up and look at. I think I used part of it on there. But this is a MoDOT map, which shows pretty much all the roads and stuff. So it's a good good source for looking at it. So if you have any questions, I can try to answer them. I, it's been a while since I've done this research. I got the, I got the call. And was up at Little Rock. Do you have any knowledge about it? About the smelter that was at Little Rock? No. It was there a few years and then sold the smelter to the company. Yeah. It would, <laughs> it, would, it would make sense. Uh, I know during the, during the Civil War, uh, St. Genevieve was considered a strategic location, so you had federal troops here during the war. And I, I wish I had a copy of it. I, I saw it. There was a letter from one of the soldiers. They would march between here and Iron Mountain, or Pilot Knob, where Fort Davidson was located. And one of the soldiers mentioned the dilapidated condition of the plank road. And that's all. That's the only other mention I've seen of it. Now, we did, I have found accounts of the route before the plank road was built and how difficult it was. So, was, how was it actually made? I mean, oh, yeah. The, uh, well, they had, uh, it was all, all wood, mm -hmm. except that they used uh, iron spikes like a railroad. But they had parallel stringers for the length of the road, and then they would put planks over that. Kind of di a little bit, di they tended to make them a little bit diagonal. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, were, they were fairly thick. Of course, there's plenty of oak trees around here, to, mm -hmm. or at least then there was, to 
to make the planks out of. So there was no shortage of material. It's just that the, it, they wore out too fast. Where were most of the sawmills? They what? Where were most of the sawmills that provided? That I don't know. My guess is they set up temporary sawmills along the route. But I would guess so. But yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure of that. They got to be right away. It wasn't, it wasn't very wide. In fact, there was only one lane. And so eastbound traffic had the right of way, as you might expect, because these were heavy wagons. So you just had to find a place to, they probably had little pull-offs at various places, but uh, the main traffic, heavy traffic, of course, was eastbound, and the empty wagons would head back westbound. And it was a little bit, it was a little bit downhill from Pilot Knob to here. So it, it, I say it, it actually worked as far as transporting the, the material. It just couldn't, couldn't stand up to the traffic. Was there a toll booth as such in I think there were, I think there were at least five. And one would have been at the there's uh, right at the edge of St. Genevieve, but exactly where I, I can't tell you. Did these toll booths, were they occupied structures? I, I think so, because they had a, the only, I don't know if I've ever seen one precisely of this road's toll booths, but they had a, a little gate that, would, that would swing up and down. Yeah. yeah, and you had to pay. Now this, obviously that one that I showed you, they didn't pay cash, they kept an account of it. So I'm not sure how often that was done. Now the, the let's say the iron companies, the road, the road was going bust, but the iron companies depended upon the road to get their stuff to here to St. Genevieve. So in effect the iron companies uh, funded the road to keep it open. And in fact when they built the road they didn't have enough money so they paid the builder in some more stock in the road. <laughs> yeah, lucky guy. Yeah, they never and they never did raise the original the original capitalization was put at a hundred thousand dollars. A tidy sum for, for this area. But that proved insufficient and then they got uh, legislation to increase that to two hundred thousand. Well, I don't think they ever sold near that much stock. Did you, uh, do you know anything about Kaiser Park on the old plank road? About? Kaiser Park? No. My, my family lives on 32, and my dad tells stories about how our property used to be like a rest stop on the old plank road hmm. and they used to call it Kaiser Park, so I have no idea. No, I've never... I've never seen anything a, I'd, about I'd, it. I've, I've never... Unfortunately, the uh, newspaper in St. Genevieve went... We, we have just scattered issues. And so, uh, I just haven't found any good accounts of actually using the road. And I'd sure like to find a letter. Somebody must have been writing letters in those days that, that they might mention it, but I haven't found it. Uh, we just don't have the, the only information I have for the exact location of the road are those surveys that they had to do when people protested. So, uh, yeah. so there was no road before. It was just uh, it, there was there was a road, but it was not. It was just a dirt road. Yeah. Yeah. How did they determine what the toll was for each? That was set by legislation. The, uh, the Enabling Act passed by the state legislature to incorporate the, <coughs> the plank road set the tolls. And then as, as things got worse, they kept passing new legislation and increasing, increasing the tolls. <laughs> but that didn't help, really. And it probably just caused more evasion. Was the tool based on each? The, one, yeah, it was ba based upon, the, I think, uh, the, the size of the wagon and the number, particularly the number of uh, horses, mules, and oxen that were pulling it. Plus, you were, if you were driving sheep or cattle, you were charged per head. Mm -hmm. 
on those. And it was in, in cents, which seems slow to us today, but in those days, a penny was a penny, so. Yeah. Did those boards ever warp from the sun and the rain, you think? I don't think they lasted long enough, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Yeah. Uh, uh, although, the, again, that soldier in the Civil War, this would have been 1863 or so, does talk about, he can still see it. He can still see the worn out road. So, uh, obviously something was there. And I don't know of any, I haven't found, the only plank roads I saw that were actually successful were out in like the California desert. They built plank roads to haul, what is it, borax from, from the mines in the Death Valley <laughs> out. And that, that tended to be pretty good because the dry climate, uh, that seemed to work for them and it wasn't worth building a railroad, I guess, until later. But otherwise, I have not found any that were really successful that made it. Yeah. It was one of those great ideas <laughs> that come, comes and goes. It was like of 18, what, 90s and so. We had a bicycle craze in America and everybody was getting around on bicycles. Well then, the automobile comes along. Well, bicycles became children's things then, so. Yeah, things, things can change quickly. I think I, I might still have an old cellular telephone that about the size of a, <laughs> a big brick, if you, want, <laughs> if you want one of those. <laughs> okay, I think that's all, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Whether, whether I'll ever get all this, I've got two or three boxes full of research stuff. Whether I'll ever get it together, I'm going to have to do it fast because I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> and write up a, an article for the Missouri Historical Review because it really needs to be told in a complete, uh, what would you say, academic fashion like the Missouri Historical Review does it. Yeah. Does the present uh, railroad from Missouri, uh, from St. Jim West follow any of the old plank road? A, a little bit, yeah. Especially along well, where the lime kiln road is. The railroad's pretty close there. So I don't I don't know that they actually used the same road bed because because that was a public road by then, but uh, pretty close in that area. And that wasn't built until well, the Missouri and Illinois called the Mike and Ike 1920s or 1902, 1902. And then the railroad f down the river line, down from St. Louis, and then down to Cape was around the turn of the century, too, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. It all came together in Yeah. Because they, of course, they used to have a, a railroad car ferry here. But I don't know how, I'm not sure how long that. 1961. That long? That long. 1904 to 1960. I wouldn't have guessed that long. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, but I, do they, do they use the, well, I still call it the Mike and Ike. Do they, is that used much anymore? The last I saw of it, there was mostly car storage on there, but from here to, from here to the lead belt. Yeah, whenever the, whenever the river gets up. When the river gets up. Mississippi line has to be north. Mississippi line goes that way. Ah, okay. They drove a locomotive over that rough creek trestle a few years ago, and that was a 1902 trestle. If you go to Farmington on 32, you see that real high trestle? They went slowly, I'll bet. Yeah, they did. I'd take a run at it. Somebody forgot the trestle part of the railroad. May I have just a second before you leave, the St. Genevieve Museum put this on tonight and I'd like to give them a hand for this, this is their first. Yeah. <laughs> and they're giving one, when's that, October the? October the 12th. October the 12th in the... Uh, the DeBerg Center. DeBerg Center. Yeah, uh, Tom Greminger is going to talk about the Civil War in St. Genevieve County. Huh. But yep. stop by the museum. We have actually have the seal of the... Uh, 
St. Genevieve Iron Mountain and uh, Pilot Knob Railroad. Oh, great. We have a mile marker in there. I think yeah, it's number seven. Number seven. And then a piece mile. of the plank road as well. Yep, and a couple oh. of oxen. So the mile Cheers. marker is like a stone tablet? Mm -hmm. Yep. Like that. Yeah. It's pretty tall. Oh. Yeah. I got, I'm sure I've seen it, but it would have been a long time ago. Yeah.